Little nervous. One minute out. What is going on guys? It's Will Kelly with Military Lawn Cuts. And in today's video, we are going to be sharing the one-on-one -on -one coaching call that we did with Mike Andes, who owns Augusta Lawn Care that has over 120 locations. This sneak peek behind the scene previews has not been shared before. We have the entire coaching call and we are going to share it with you. So get your pen and paper out and take some notes because this is literally advice from a lawn care millionaire. Now, I do want to say that I do apologize about the audio. The audio is not the greatest in this video. I was doing the video on my laptop, but nonetheless, it's invaluable information. You definitely want to hear this stuff. We'll see you guys here in a bit. What's up? Well, how's it going, brother? It's going good, man. How are you? Good, good. Let me make sure I got everything set up here correctly. Okay, cool. Awesome. Well, good to finally meet you. Absolutely. It, dude, it's, a, it's, a, it's an honor and a pleasure. I mean, you bring so much great value to this uh, community and, and environment. So thank you, seriously, from the bottom of my heart, man. It's, it's an honor to, to talk to you. So I appreciate it. Absolutely. Cool. Well, I know a little bit about you, but let's go ahead and give me a little bit of background, why you got started in lawn care specifically, and um, then we'll jump into kind of where we're at now and uh, what we can do uh, in the future yeah absolutely so um so starting off uh when i was younger my dad actually helped me hand out flyers and things like that um when i was like 13 14 he let me use a mower um, i had like six seven clients so i kind of had like a small little business growing up uh joined the army i was a paratrooper in the, uh, in the united states army um it specialist got out and i was like you know i, I knew that i didn't want to work for someone else uh, for the rest of my life. So uh, just, yeah, started a business uh, and I was like, I know how to do lawn care. So um, started doing that again. Uh, my wife has been helping me with the landscaping side of it and everything. And uh, we moved down here to Texas, started our company about three and a half years ago. And we've been growing like a wildfire ever since with, with God's help and, and, every, and all the guidance I've been seeking and everything like that. So it's been amazing. So that would have been 2019 you started, is that right? It was, yeah, 2019. So, so walk us through 2019, 2020, 2021. What's the revenue been like those past three years? Yeah, so 2019, Grand, it was myself, a Grand Prix, and I was actually walking to customers' properties. Uh, we did a, a $22,000 in sales. Went on Facebook Marketplace, bought a $125 mower, and just started the business. Um, and then in year two, my wife stepped away from Aldi as a manager. And she kind of helped me out a lot with the answering the phones and office side. And we went from 22,000 to 125,000 in sales. Um, we did purchase our first truck that year. And so that's like the only, so we're a debt free company. We've put uh, just four, we bought a truck for $4,000. It's an 09 and the $125 mower. And I've reinvested all the money since. Uh, year three, we did, last year we did 365,000. This year we're on pace to do uh, just shy of 700,000. It's gonna be around probably that 650 mark, I think, so. Perfect, okay, awesome. Um, and what do you think kind of has led to the growth in the past year? Mostly just more marketing and advertising? Obviously your, your wife's helped you for the last few years. Um, are you hiring? What, what's kind of led to the growth in terms of revenue? Yeah, I think for the, for like the beginning, I think, uh, obviously God's favor, God's help, like that's probably the foundation. Um, we've really kind of leaned into that. We, th we believe that he's bringing us the right people, the right guidance, the right mentors into our life. Um, so we've really leaned into that. <clears throat> um, as far as like a marketing standpoint, I've, I've got kind of our numbers and everything, but, um, obviously just logoing up the trucks. We sent actually 30,000 flyers through EDDM last year. Uh, to really kind of expand. Flyers have really been what we've leaned into. Uh, at first we were doing door to door, but um, you know, as we grew, we kind of weighed the option of, hey, do we pay an employee to hand out flyers or do we just send them through the mail? And once we got a little bit more revenue, we've just been kind of pumping them through the mail. Um, so uh, we've done like 30,000 flyers th through the mail and things like that, so. All right, so as you've grown, now, um where have you seen some of the cracks starting to form as the company scaled up? Obviously, at the beginning, it's mostly just you, just your wife, a little more in control. Where are the cracks in the business now or things that are preventing it from scaling up further? Yeah, I think we've been doing a really like 
good job at like trying to implement systems kind of similar to kind of your model and everything with like, so we're on P4P, uh, we do open book management and things like that. Um, I would say kind of the biggest cracks that we're kind of experiencing. So we're in the process of trying to open up a second location and like we have logistically, like I've tried to seek guidance and advice from like multiple people that are there and who have done it, but we just don't exactly know like how to do it logistically of like structurally setting it up because like we're looking at literally moving like maybe 30 40 minutes down the road so like we could technically have like this location kind of like do a lot of that operational standpoint but it's like you know I'm, I'm i'm very conservative i like kind of i like the idea of like separating them into different llc's and stuff like that but then it's like you get into the kind of sticky water of like okay well now do you do you have one crm and just have different branches do you have two different emails? Do you have two different credit card accounts? Like two different websites? Just all of those like logistical things of like how do you scale that and and then duplicate that? You know, um, so yeah, that's Is kind your of goal to have many locations down the road, or what's sort of your end goal? Yeah, honestly, um, so I really like what you're doing, making an impact in in like I guess lawn care and change the professionalism. I think our biggest vision and mission is to help and serve and bless other people. Um, I'm super business savvy minded, number like oriented. Obviously we've built a successful, like I believe like one location business, but I wanna duplicate that at least two or three times and then take the goal of like potentially franchising this. Uh, our goal is in 2025 to at least franchise in the state of Texas. So that way some of the guys that we're starting to onboard, like um, I just wanna, basically teach other people how to build a business that runs without them so that way they can take care of their family and um and not you know work for the rest of their life and and you know do do hopefully serve other people as well so absolutely yeah like, i think before even thinking about franchising like doing three locations is a massive undertaking that will prove the system is required mm -hmm. and then you can kind of from there i would determine okay do i franchise this and deal with a completely different business model or do i just keep doing this over and over and over again to enrich and maximize the impact you're going to have on people right because like when you go franchising it's a completely different business it is like a completely different industry you're, you're in business services right you're no longer in, in services for customers in terms of uh you know b2c you know b2b right so it's, it's a very different model but you can make that decision i feel like after having two or three locations because you have you can, you can then have the opportunity to go both ways, either or, right? And so either a like you keep opening new location to get general managers, or b you actually do the franchise route, right? Um, okay, cool. And so right now in terms of the systems, what is some of the, the parts that you're concerned about as you go to two locations? Is it mostly just do I split things up, or like let let's just break that down? So you are. What's the pros? Like, why would you consider doing the separate LLCs, separate bank accounts, separate everything versus keeping it together? So I think the reason why I like that, um, so uh, I believe this location in Aubrey, Texas can do at its max capacity probably two million. Um, now it'll take maybe three, four, five more years as it grows. But I think each location that we kind of plant within a five mile radius can do probably 1.5 to $2 million. I think that's pretty easily capable of doing. Um, I like the aspect of the security of just kind of segregating it from a liability standpoint and litigation. Um, and then um, really just having really clean books um, and, and just kind of really s uh, separating that. I also like the ability to, to do profit sharing for that location. Because yeah. when you have, like, for example, the Aubrey location might be, like, super successful. It's not growing anymore, so now it's in profit mode. But then you have one that's just starting out there, sucking all the cash. It's not fair for these employees to get profit sharing when all the profit's going that way, you know. Um, yep, exactly. Yeah, so that, that's the main reason why, especially because you're going to need more. That's why I was asking you what your future goal is, because if you're only going to do two locations, I would probably keep it all together. But if your goal is three and beyond, mm -hmm. and you really have to start – figuring out how to be able to incentivize a general manager over that location. And the big thing to think about is, do you actually want it to become 2 million? And I'm not trying to dissuade you from doing that, but the reason you need to actually have this you know, thought process is, replacing yourself at a $2 million level is a completely different hire than trying to replace or build a business to 500, 700,000, right? Mm -hmm. like where you're at right now, trying to replace you and your current operational 
uh, what you have to do on a daily basis is a very different picture than if you go to two million. And, and not only is it a matter of the skill set, it's also the number of people you will need in management for that operation to run successfully. Right? So typically, we, we, we are able to have one general manager over a location up until about six to 800,000. They need more management. Right? They, like, when you get 900,000, a million, a million plus, you now need multiple people in management. And that starts to become, number one, very difficult to hire in terms of multiple locations. And then secondarily, also top heavy in terms of overhead. And you actually have to start, like, you will make no more money at, say, 800,000 with two general managers or like two you know, top executives versus 500,000 when there's just one GM and they're out in the field working half their day, right? Mm -hmm. So just keep it in mind, the level of skill required to fulfill those locations is very different. Um, and right now, do you have someone to, to man the second location? I do, yeah. So the second location, he's super, um, like, uh, he, he wants to do the work. Um, he's very like out, out in the go. So I think he'll be a really good fit for the first like year or two as we scale up to like 200,000 and 300, 400, because I know he'll be out in the field a lot. Um, so yeah, I do have a really good, he's been with us for three seasons. Um, he's he's awesome. And he, yeah, he, he would be able to to run that or start that location. And this is, this is why I asked you like how many locations you want, because if you want to scale a lot of locations, not, not three or four, but like I'm talking like down the road 10, 20, et cetera, if, if that's something in your mind, or even five. Um, ask yourself which is easier to find. And I would assume the person that you're talking about right now worked with you, has worked with you for a while, is that right? Yes. Started out in the field and basically proved himself. Yeah, like this is what we call a working G GM. And so basically someone who's worked in the field, they start to learn the systems, understand the systems, and like, hey, you have caliber to be able to manage and be a trustworthy enough for us to be able to put you in a GM position, but you might not be able to run a location that's doing two million, right? Because a two million dollar operation is requiring someone with leadership skills, executive abilities, be able to do finance, marketing, like you're talking about potentially a doubling of a salary just to find that person, let alone the ability to find that, that level of caliber that wants to do landscaping. Because if you let's just say you have to pay someone's you know seventy or eighty thousand dollars for a two million dollar lo location, even even at that, their alternative is a management C, C level at you know a mid sized company that's doing ten million gross revenue, and they're able to make that same amount as a manager, right? So that that's that's just one thing to think about. And the reason I say that is because you might find as you scale up the six fifty location too far above, it actually is harder and harder to replace yourself because they just get so operationally dense. And that's what, like, for example, me personally, as I've started scaling up my own, like I, the location that I own Augusta, mm -hmm. is we're only scaling to five to 700,000, and then we just turn the profit knob on massive and then mm -hmm. don't let it grow as much. Gotcha. Um, because I, I only care about bottom line profit, and I just want one GM, and they don't have to be the person that has leadership abilities and, and hire and fire tons of people and have 20, 30 guys working and a whole bunch of trucks and a mechanic and all the rest of it that goes into a 20, 30 person operation. They don't need that level of skill. They just need to be able to manage three to four crews, five to six guys, and they can run a very profitable 20 to 25% profit margin business. That's not what you should do. I'm necessarily saying, I'm just saying it's something to think about as you begin to think about how do you find next people. The reason I say this is because your general manager at multiple locations is the deciding factor of whether or not it succeeds or not. It completely hinges on that one person. And so it's not like you've got a really good guy to be able to, to run that size. Mm -hmm. And so just keep in the back of your mind, don't, I would just recommend don't be hell bent on growing your two million because it might be making it so operationally hard to replace yourself that it makes the systems even harder to create. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And are you are you going to start the new location or is he going to run the current location and you go start the new one? So um, one of our employees that uh, has been with us, we've just, we're hiring him in, or he's been working with us for like three or four months. Outstanding guy. Shows up like just everything that you need we want in a GM. So he's gonna run our Aubrey location, that's the current location, and it's actually moving to his house where he's gonna pay it, charge us rent and things like that. So it's gonna run at his, his house. Um, the other employee is who's gonna be the uh, new GM at this other location out in like Frisco McKinney, uh, he's gonna 
we're just gonna kind of plan it in a storage unit, get that thing going out there, and then, yeah, he's gonna run that. So I've got ops manager or GM that you kind of wanna call it uh, for your model over there running that, and then I've got another working GM out in the field running that location. Got it, okay. Um, so you're gonna have your current guys with you now running the current location doing 650, probably next year doing, I imagine, probably 800,000, let's just say that, just yeah. be conservative. Other locations starting out, you got a general manager, let's just call it that, over there. What's your role going to look like next year? So I'm kind of getting classified, I guess you could say, as like a, a branch manager or like a, above that, maybe CEO, if you want to call it. Um, really kind of managing both of, of just making, uh, uh, actually hiring, doing all the hiring and then and sales. So I'm going to be doing all the interviews for both locations um, getting, do, doing all that stuff. And then, um, and then really like, uh, flyers, marketing dollars, all that stuff for kind of both, both of those locations. Um, and then, yeah, kind of setting up the help that they need. Like, under, underneath that premise, it might be easier to keep them together because if you're trying to do two different sales, like you're going between software systems and your different CRM accounts, mm -hmm. you are, hiring for two different organizations, it's just gonna get super confusing. Like I would personally say, if you're going to delineate LLCs, try to make those self-sufficient, right? There's no reason to separate the LLCs from a liability perspective if you're doing both because it won't hold up in, in court, right. right? If you are driving one estimate vehicle, for example, and it's licensed under this entity, but then you go out and do estimates for this other entity, in, in, a, in, a, in a court of law, you're gonna breach the corporate veil. So right. it'll still, it won't, there won't be an LLC protection there. Mm -hmm. So I would either A, keep them separate and very separate with no phone numbers, different salespeople, et cetera, or I would do it all together. And the reason I think potentially, if that's the model you go, which you're going to, if that's what you do, I would definitely recommend um, making sure that, like, if you have two, mm, because really my main concern, especially next spring, you have 650,000, it's just like, take a snapshot, 650,000 revenue, you got a brand new location, you're gonna have one person doing as a general manager, another as a general manager, you, your wife, do you have another office assistant or is it just your wife in the office? Uh, no, so we have an office manager, she's phenomenal. Um, she's super detailed, yeah. So my concern is the number of overhead employees that mm -hmm. we're starting to rack up for early next spring, right? And so when you start looking at you, two general managers. I know the the, the, the third one there be out in the field quite a bit at you know they're starting a new location now. Mm -hmm. But then you have an office person, your wife, etc. We have all of these people starting to work on the business. That's very operationally heavy in terms of overhead. Like just those four or five people are going to cost you what two three hundred thousand dollars. And next spring we're going to be at a run rate of maybe nine hundred to a million. Right, that's twenty thirty percent of revenue going out the door just to overhead salaries. Right, right. So my only concern is growth needs to be very high if that's the model you go. Like it needs to be very high, mm -hmm. um, and I think it can because you're going to be only doing sales, right? Absolutely. So that, yeah. that is my only concern with doing the two locations, and then another thing is in terms of your current guy that's going to be running. Is that his house? Is that right? Yes. Yeah. And we're paying, he's, uh, we're doing like a lease agreement and all that stuff. So, um, he's going to be running operations kind of at his house. He's like seven minutes down the road for me. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Um, that sounds good. In terms of the systems themselves, like running it, running a second and third location literally is the way to find the holes in the business. Um, because you can't physically be at both at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so, just prepare yourself kind of emotionally, honestly, for next spring. Yeah. Uh, because you will find every single issue in the business and your employees the moment you do two locations, especially because you're going to still be at the top of both, mm -hmm. right? So you, what you want to figure out is staying at the top of both, you'll feel more in control. That's a good thing. The, the part that's going to be challenging is you're going to feel a little bit torn because you can't be in both places at the same time. Like team meetings, you can't be at both at the same time. Now you say, well, I'll do alternate days. Well, you're still not getting the crew started, right? And then it's a matter of two. If you're the CEO, but then you kind of have a general manager, it's sometimes hard for them to find their footing in terms of leadership inside the company. Mm. Because like, well, 
I'm the C the CEO shows up a couple times a week and tells everyone what to do, but I'm the general manager or operations manager. Well, what happens if the CEO is not here? Am I in charge? Like you want to very clearly define what that role for them looks like mm -hmm. and what that chain of command is going to look like once you're gone. Right. Absolutely. So I like, and, and I'm open for like, you know, like, uh, just advice to like, I, I do kind of like, I mean, originally I was like, no, we need to separate it. LLC, like all this stuff. Right. But I just feel like it would be very difficult to find a general manager that number one works hard and is physically capable out in the field. Number two has leadership capabilities. Number three has high EQ that can actually dictate and hire like, like quality candidates, like getting that well-rounded person. I just feel like would be very, very difficult per se, um, going that route, you know, um, that's well, kind of yeah, one of my like, struggles. Totally. And that's when like the systems have to be dialed in to be able to take a lower level talent mm -hmm. and make them be profitable and efficient and make it work. Right. right? And so either a, you work very hard on the systems, and, and that the like, hiring systems, the sales systems, et cetera, or B, you're going to have to, you know, be at the top running some of those more EQ driven things and then just find good people out in the field that can be leaders, right? right. The thing, thing that always ends up happening is what happens when you're gone, right? If sales stop when you're gone, you're still, you still just build yourself a bigger, a bigger job, mm -hmm. right? And that's my concern is, Okay, let's go 800,000 extra at this location. Let's say 250,000 at the other location. Okay, we're a million. Great. We really just build ourselves a bigger job. Because if you stop selling or you stop hiring, mm. then the organization will still stop. Right. Absolutely. And so, like, I would be inclined, if, if separating the two is, is something you want to do, um, and I think the, the, the assignment I want you to think through this week is let's really nail down do we divide it or do we keep them together mm -hmm. and what, what are the pros and cons of that and then go over that with your new the, the guy that you have currently you know, kind of are fostering for that position um, because what, what, what potentially could happen is you take your this location right here now and turn off growth and what I mean by that is like hey we're not going to go buy more trucks we're just going to hire more people and fill up the trucks more. We're going to go from 650 this year to maybe 750, but we're going to raise prices. Our close ratio is going to go down because we're going to raise prices. We're going to raise prices on existing customers and new customers. Mm -hmm. And but now instead, of, like, what, would, what do you think you'll profit on 650 before before you pay yourself? Uh, before we, I pay myself. Uh, I'm not I'm not entirely sure on that, but I know 13 and a half percent is what we're making year to date paying myself. And I think my wife and I, we had taken home like for the year, I think, right to year to date, probably I think 60 K so far between the two of us. Perfect. So about 80 to 90 thousand uh, dollars in profit plus your, what you're taking. Home. So right now you're probably what 140 all in. So you're looking at around 25 percent profit, 20, 22 to 23 percent probably in profit margin, mm -hmm. right? Um, and what I'm concerned about is $150,000 gets burned very quickly when you get a GM involved, right? Because now you've got someone overhead, 50, 60,000 plus taxes and then an extra car and all the rest of it. And your profit margin really will get whacked in half, right? You'll go from 150 pulling out of the business down to 60 or 70,000 very quickly because mm -hmm. they're not going to be as good as you. They're not going to put as many hours in as you. They're not going to sell as well as you, et cetera. And so... That fifty, sixty thousand dollars has to sustain the second location. Mm. What well, is an interesting model though to me is can we go to seven fifty and still pull out one hundred fifty or two hundred thousand by raising prices, and really just turn that first first location into an absolute money machine, like not so much growth, just turn into a money machine. And now because it's at that size, he doesn't have to be the caliber of person that's buying trucks and more equipment and like going out and selling a whole bunch. There's already this base of customers that he can really just live off of. Mm -hmm. And then either he learned basic estimating and the sales of those, or potentially you do them. But again, he has this base of customers that is paying a premium price, you know, pay your guys more, there's better profit sharing. And then you take that $200,000 in profit and you go deploy that against the second location with enough capital to really make it something quicker, right? Because right? if you only have fifty to sixty thousand dollars in profit from your second, your first location, because this new overhead comes into play, that's very not not a whole lot to then throw into a second location that's going to be sucking money for the first three to six months, right? 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 And so I I'd be inclined, and this is just something to think about. I don't. I, this is not necessarily what I would recommend. I think we need to 
this, I really want you to, to parse those two options out this week, is do we, A, raise, raise the prices on, on location one, not necessarily grow as much, and then focus on taking those profits on into the second location? Because what I don't want you to do is try to grow both at the same time. I think you will literally go crazy, and it will um, it'll, it'll really deplete your funds, really deplete them, like okay. very scarily. Right. Um, in my opinion, from about February to June of next year, it would just be a very, very skinny time mm -hmm. because your margins would be going down in your first location at the same time that your second location is sucking cash. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. So if we do that route, like... And we'll obviously, because like we've been kind of looking at this for the last couple of months of like what the best option is. But like, like if we did that, would you recommend really secluding it? Because like, like if we do that, it's like, do we have to get, because we only have one office manager right now and we're going to, you know, hire one or two probably in the spring, maybe just for seasonal, like those three, four months. But like for the office manager, like secluding, it's like, okay, she answering calls for both of those locations that they're both separate LLC. Like, how do you like even handle that? And if, it's, if you're putting that, that payroll on the Aubrey location, the first one, isn't that kind of unfair? Cause she's answering the calls for this one. And you know, it's just like all of those intricate details that like play a part in completely separate, separating it. Or do we have to go out and hire another office person to kind of take, take those calls and stuff like that, you know? Yeah, totally. So great call. So um, from the calls perspective, you know, any really good half decent phone system like Grasshopper, Ring Central, whatever, two separate phone numbers. When the phone number comes in, it's going to tell them which location it comes from based upon the phone number that the customer is calling. Mm -hmm. So they immediately, when they see that, can pull up the correct profile. So they're looking at the correct location, right? And then what I would recommend doing is either A, splitting the cost of that office person between the locations based upon monthly revenue, mm -hmm. and you can just do, do a journal entry between the two uh, at the end of the month, or B, have your office manager literally clock the minutes they work for each location. Gotcha. Um, you can also do it just by phone time. Say, for example, one location has 18 hours on the phone, the other one has six hours on the phone. Okay, great. That's the percentage that we're going to cut the office bill, and we're going to do a journal entry between the two so that the books are correct. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Awesome. And then that way too, you, you're able to just have one office, one office person. You don't need an office at the second location, right? Um, but Correct. you still need them obviously answering the phones and everything. But mm -hmm. that's that's the idea way to keep it separated is, is really the delineation, like different phone number, different LLC. Uh, because if you're doing just a new LLC just for the sake of liability, if you're piercing the corporate veil that much, like there, there's no reason to do it at that point, right? Yeah. So. At that point, it's like, hey, just make an S corp with a whole bunch of LLCs underneath it, so you know, one policy for insurance, one bank account, etc., and then just you know, have separate bank accounts. You, like, you can get creative if you did it all under one, mm -hmm. but based upon your profit sharing, and if you really want to do GMs, like PF people run them entirely by themselves, you want to have them separated. If your goal though is that you keep running at the top level of all of them, you don't really need to separate them out. Yeah, I think the goal is to just really kind of remove myself from the day-to-day -day operations, um, you know. And so, but it, it just, I guess it like posed a little bit of a, of a challenge. Like, again, when we open that third or fourth location, it's like, are they really going to have four different logins on Service Autopilot and, you know, four different quick, you know. But I guess what you're saying is, is like really just have the general managers run a lot of that, but maybe have some kind of call center, something like you built like command center or something on the back end to kind of manage a lot of that stuff. So, Yeah, absolutely. And like, especially as the GMs, if you systematize, like for example, the, the location that is 750 or is 650 this year, and you'll maybe let next year, if we turn it to profitability, it goes 750 or 800, right? Mm -hmm. What you're also doing when you switch a location from growth into profitability is you're starting to cut out all the things that take your time, right? So anything that like right now in the business only you can do or like only you can sell, it should be cut out. If, you, if that's the model you go, right? If the model is, and if you want to get out of daily operations, I would highly recommend not trying to be the salesperson at the top of two different companies, mm -hmm. two different locations, um, because you just become the bottleneck for everything and it's going to become harder and harder because you're in such massive growth mode. A location that's doing $2 million in revenue with like a bunch of different services and complexity, like it's going to be very hard to re replace yourself in daily operations, right? right? And so mm -hmm. you, in my opinion, 
someone who says, I want to replace myself with daily operations, and I want to build a, a company that's $2 million in revenue and has a whole bunch of different types of services, that's a 10-year plan. By the time you build up the location size and then actually systematize all the parts of that business. Right. That's going to become a two-year or three-year plan, though, if you system, like, simplify the business and raise your margins. Yeah. Right? Hmm. So... I, I don't. I know it kind of seems like I'm pushing you towards the direction that we use, which is more location-based GM, letting them take care of everything. Like I never talk to them, sort of deal. Um, I'm, I just don't want that to be the reason why you would say that's what we're going to do. I really want you to kind of balance these two options out mm-hmm. and see how this would work. And honestly, again, the, the, the success of a location comes down to your GM, and so he needs to be brought into this equation. Like, okay, do you see yourself running a two million dollar location? If the answer to that is no on his end, or even in your mind, like. Okay, he, he can't do that. Right. Then the question becomes like, how confident are you you can go find someone that can? Mm. Because if not, you're just going to be stuck in daily operations of a $2 million organization. We're going to be having a conversation in three years about how you defragment all the complexities of the business so you, someone else can take it over. Makes sense. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, that that makes sense. So when if if we did decide to segregate it, would you, would that, would you do like an LLC and then its own S Corp or keep it under the S corp that we have now of just like LLC one or LLC two and just like kind of segregate that do way. You have, do you have an, an actual S corp right now or, or do you for, do a form 11 point? Yeah. So if you have an yeah. S corp, then just do it in LLC, another LLC underneath the S corp. So that way you can file one tax return at the top, okay. but then each LLC can have its own bank accounts, own insurance, etc. for the different GMs. Um, Got it. But what what I want for this week is really for you just to really nail down the pros and the cons of both of those. Okay. And really think through, okay, if you want to be out of daily operations, what does that look like? And does the business need to change? Because literally what you have to do if you want to be out of daily operations is everything that you do that people can't other people can't do in the business needs to be removed. And ultimately grow a two million dollar location potentially might actually keep you in the business for the next five to ten years right that makes sense awesome okay awesome so yeah i'll definitely create that for the pros and cons for for next week um cool sounds good cool. sounds good and then, and then the only other thing i know you got a bunch of questions of zach said but let's let's nail that down this week and then also i want to look at specific systems that would break regardless of what we do whether it be like okay what's our sales system What's our hiring system? Like we need to look at the thing that you're currently doing and create some sort of a framework around it mm-hmm. so it can work without you. But let's actually dive into a couple of those that are the most pressing that you currently like are struggling with handing off mm-hmm. and start systematizing it just one by one. Okay, awesome. Yeah, because like the last like two months, I've been creating standard operating procedures of everything that, that we do. And I've got the field nailed down. I've got the office, I think, side nailed down. It's just that branch manager role of like hiring uh, yep. you know, all that sales stuff and like, you know, uh, just income and expense sheets, profit and loss, all that stuff. So, um, awesome. Yeah. I'll definitely, uh, put that, put that together for pros and cons and then, um, for those systems too. So cool. Awesome. All right, brother. Well, welcome to business bootcamp. Let's do this. Thank you. Appreciate it, Mike. Take care, brother. Have a great weekend. Have, have a good one. Thanks for your time. Okay. Absolutely. Bye. Bye-bye. Recording stop. Let's go! Call one down. Or call one. First call down. There it is. Whew! Sorry. A little, a little sweating a little bit. But um, that was an awesome call. He is so knowledgeable. And I know for a fact this, this that call right there is going to propel us. I know it. So, cool. Alrighty guys, that wraps up the video today. If you found value and you made it all the way to the end, smash that subscribe button, leave a comment below, like the video, it helps the channel out to bring you guys more great content. See you guys here in a bit.